Hi, and welcome to this week's episode. Today, I'm going to start talking to you about an incredibly interesting topic, which is around the subject of peptides. And you might have heard of peptides or read some things about them. They're promoted widely for all kinds of things. So I wanted to focus in on what's the science, what isn't, should we take them, should we not take them, and specifically focus in on just one peptide today, because that's enough. It can get really sciencey really fast. So I'm going to do my best to give you a broad overview that is something that anyone can understand, because it's pretty complicated. So first of all, what is a peptide? Well, peptides are just a short chain of amino acids. So basically, it's just a short protein. As you remember from science class, proteins are amino acids that are joined together in different patterns, and they can be really long chains, but a peptide is just a short chain of amino acids, usually less than 40. So lots of peptides have been developed in order to have specific functions in our body. Uh, for example, the weight loss agent that we commonly talk about, semaglutide, is a peptide. There are lots of them out there, but the idea is that each of them has a specific function to stimulate a particular pathway in our body in a very targeted manner. And so generally they are being promoted for things like weight loss, muscle growth, various anti-aging claims, all of the stuff that sounds pretty darn interesting when you're at our time of life. So do they really work? Well, I'm going to talk to you about one particular peptide. Well, actually, it's a combination of two that seems to be the favorite flavor currently for all of those things that many of us might want, like I mentioned, weight loss, muscle growth, improvement of skin, improvement of bone density, improvement of sleep, memory, multiple functions. And so this particular combination is called ipamorelin, long word, and CJC1295. Now, they give them these fancy names. <laughs> I don't know why, but ipamorelin has actually been around since 1998. It was developed by a very big drug company called Novo Nordisk, and then now it's been used in various studies ever since then. And CJC1295 is a slightly different peptide that's also been used in a whole bunch of different studies, but combining them together seems to be a really good idea, and let me see if I can explain why. Well, let's take one of them at a time. Ipamorelin is a peptide that increases growth hormone production from our pituitary gland. So an interesting fact about humans as we age is that our growth hormone decreases. This is a natural thing that happens Testosterone decreases, of course, estrogen disappears, arguably our thyroid function decreases. A lot of our hormones decline with age, and growth hormone is thought to be one of the hormones that in that decline is responsible for a lot of the things that we associate with aging. So nobody's suggesting that we're going to stop aging, but if we could slow down those processes that we just kind of take for granted, like muscle loss, increasing fat, losing memory, not sleeping as well, all of those things that we just think are normal and inevitable, if we could slow that down safely, wouldn't that be a good idea? So this is why all of this research has gone into peptides that increase growth hormone, and ipamorelin is one of them. Now, what's kind of neat about these peptides is you're not actually taking growth hormone. Now, human growth hormone was synthesized. You can probably still get it in some kind of a black market way, but it was not so great, let's just say. So it was used by bodybuilders mainly and in weight loss programs. But when we actually give the hormone itself, it suppresses our own pituitary gland and we can get levels that are way too high and can even lead to bony changes in the face, uh, other things that we don't want. So there's actually a disease called acromegaly where we can have a growth hormone producing tumor and it's terrible and we don't want that. So we know that having growth hormone levels that are too high is dangerous. So we don't wanna take growth hormone. That's not a good idea and that's been shown for many years to be not the best thing to do. But using these peptides like ipamorelin, for example, 
encourages your body to produce its own growth hormone. So there's a limit on how much we will produce. Growth hormone is also really interesting in that our body doesn't produce it all the time. It's produced in these little pulses. And so that's natural and that's the way it works the best in our body. We've been doing it all of our lives. So if you take growth hormone from the outside world in a consistent manner, it's going to shut down that pulsatile release of growth hormone and a bunch of bad stuff happens. Whereas epimoralin just stimulates your own body to do what it actually normally does. And so that pulsatile release of growth hormone continues. Does that make sense? So it's totally different than taking growth hormone. It's stimulating your body to produce its own growth hormone. The idea behind that is that we're elevating growth hormone back to levels that we had when we were younger. And when we were younger, and arguably we were healthier, we had better bone density, we slept better, we had more muscle mass, we hopefully had less fat, all of these things that we consider normal with aging. And then memory, brain function, all kinds of things. So growth hormone has been shown in many, many studies. Granted, a lot of them are on animals and some of them are just in cells in the lab, but there are human studies also showing this to be true as well, that elevating growth hormone to normal human levels, not crazy high levels, reduces all of those things. And so we see all those things improve. One of the biggest improvements is with sleep which is huge for menopausal patients. So sleep, muscle mass, losing fat, better memory, better skin, all of those things. That is the suggestion of what might happen if you elevate your growth hormone. Now, I'm going to be really careful not to say that any of these things will happen because the FDA doesn't like us saying those kind of things since there aren't enough human studies to really say that with certainty. But this stuff's been around since 1998, so many people have used it. A lot of the studies were done in Russia and other countries. So there's just, there's a lot of research out there. It's just, it hasn't really been absorbed into, you know, traditional academic medical culture yet, so to say. But tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are taking it around the country right now. And one of them is me. <laughs> so I'll talk to you a little bit more about that. So Ipamoralin. Um, it's, I, you know, you don't want too much science about this stuff, but it, it, it works on a slightly different pathway than its partner, that's CJC1295. They work together through different mechanisms to increase your body's production of growth hormone from the pituitary gland, and then potentially all kinds of good things happen, right? So different pathways. One of them, the Ipamorelin component actually works on a receptor called the ghrelin receptor. Now that might sound a bit scary if you remember that ghrelin is the hunger hormone, but it does not make you hungry. That's just the name of the receptor. Um, works through that receptor and then that increases growth hormone in that way. While the CJC1295 actually increases growth hormone releasing hormone, which is the hormone that our hypothalamus makes as part of our brain, that naturally turns on the pituitary. So that's probably enough science about how this stuff works, but suffice to say, ipamorelin and CJC1295 together work through different pathways to increase growth hormone, and they work better together, studies show, than individually. So you could take one or the other, but the current favorite of the month is to take them both together. So. Having studied quite a bit about this, um, I continue my policy of never giving anything to anybody if I haven't tried it myself. I've actually been using this myself for the last 30 days, and I wanted to share some of my experiences with it. So first of all, how do you take it? Well, peptides, because they are proteins, if you put them in your stomach, they're broken down by stomach acid. So unfortunately, you cannot take them by mouth. So the annoying thing is they're given by injection, and the more annoying thing is it's a daily injection. So when I heard about that, I thought that just sounded like that was not going to happen. But it's actually quite easy. Um, I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, this is a what a vial of the peptide would look like. In fact, this is mine. Um, you keep it in the fridge uh, because proteins degrade at high temperature every morning. Turn it upside down. This is an insulin needle. 
It's tiny. If you're scared of needles, you probably cannot even barely see the point of this needle. It's so small. You just stick it in the rubber cap and it's the teeniest amount. I mean, five units is literally just as much as up to that black mark. Tiny, tiny amount. And then it would be given in your tummy. I would do it just directly under my skin in a horizontal manner, not sticking it in this way. And you truly cannot even feel it. So my routine has been to open the fridge in the morning, do it. That takes about that long. It really takes about 10 seconds, but it is a habit to get into. And regarding the time of day to give it, you can give it in the morning and at night which is what I'm doing, or you can just give it at night and either way works fine. Now, a cool thing is you cannot give yourself too much. If you thought more would be a good idea, it just will not work because those receptors are gonna be overwhelmed. So that tiny amount, once a day or increasing to twice a day is all you need. Now it's a little bit tricky as far as timing, but this works really well if you're somebody who's doing some form of uh, timed eating or intermittent fasting because you want to give it on an empty stomach. So for people like me who are trying to gain muscle, I do it in the morning fasting and then I work out. So that is recommended because your growth hormone is going to go up while you're lifting weight. So that's that that's the idea behind doing it that way. And then doing it at night bit tricky because you want to do it at least two hours after you've eaten and that is going to encourage you to stick to your intermittent fasting helps with sleep. So really interesting. I, here's why you don't want to do it when you're just eaten because your insulin will go up and that diminishes the ability for this stuff to work because one of the ways that it works is it helps lower insulin, lower cortisol, and it also helps to increase melatonin production at night. So all of those things are great and people do report better sleep with it. So a lot of different benefits. So I've been trying the twice a day. If you did it once a day, you would do it at night. I found it very helpful to make me stick to my intermittent fasting <laughs> protocol because, you know, I like to eat late at night and that two hours of not eating before bed is hard for me. But if I know I have to wait two hours after eating to give myself my little injection, that's just another reminder. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so I've been doing it for a month. Now, changes don't happen overnight, so you don't expect to see miracles happen overnight, but I have actually noticed a huge improvement in my sleep, and we've talked about sleep here a lot, and I've talked a lot about my own personal challenges with sleep, so if somebody has something that can help me sleep better, I am going to try it, and uh, as I also tell you, I wear an Aura ring, O-U-R-A, link below. Everybody should have one. I can track how much sleep I'm getting and what quality of sleep it is. And one of the parts of my sleep that has always been a challenge that I've been measuring with this amazing device is the, the amount of deep sleep that I get. So we, we don't need that much deep sleep, but at least an hour or maybe two hours of deep sleep is really great because that's when we get into that really rest and restoration phase. And my deep sleep has significantly increased since using this and I haven't changed anything else. So I think perhaps that's why in my study with one person and then again, I'm not saying this will happen for everybody, but certainly this is something that a lot of people have noticed. Now, as you know, I'm also doing strength training. I do a lot of cardio, really trying to keep my body fat low and my muscle mass high. And that has improved over the past month just slightly because these changes happen slowly. Another thing that's happened is it actually decreased my appetite, which I was surprised. Some people do notice that, especially because we hear this stuff attaches to the ghrelin receptor. That does sound scary because ghrelin's a hunger hormone, but it does not increase appetite. Uh, so slow changes in improving muscle mass. But what I noticed even within a week is that I felt better. Uh, there are a lot of people report that there's just a slight mood enhancement, more energy, Maybe that's because we're sleeping better. Nobody really knows, <laughs> but having a little bit more growth hormone makes us feel better in various ways. I noticed even after a week when I was doing my normal workout, I just felt like I blew through it. It was like easier and I had a better attitude and just a lot of positive changes. Now, if I kept taking it, we might see some more long-term results and I'll report on those as far as improving bone density, I think my skin looks better, but you know, maybe this is a placebo effect. I don't know, but it definitely starting to notice some positive changes in lots of different ways. 
mostly sleep. And that is very, very important for me. Mood, strength, and slowly improving body composition. So we see improved fat burning and improved muscle gain. So those are very cool things. So you can use this or you may want to, again, I'm not recommending it. I'm just saying it's out there. You might want to use this in a weight loss program. So in our weight loss program, where we're using semaglutide, which is FDA approved for weight loss. And you know, it's gonna take many, many more years before these peptides are FDA approved because it's just so many studies are required. And I don't personally wanna wait 10 years until it is FDA approved because I'm pretty sure it will be. At that point, I've lost a lot of the benefit. Being 55, I, you know, I want to do that now. Because if we find out that it's FDA approved for all of the things that we kind of already know, when I'm 70, well, I'm going to lose the opportunity to get all that benefit. <laughs> so you might choose the same. So uh, a few things about how to give it. So I already talked about giving it daily. Uh, most people take it at night or you can give it morning and night. If you're uh, losing weight or trying to lose weight or gain muscle, you could do that. Um, certainly once a day is probably the most common prescribed way to give it. You can't give yourself too much because you'll overwhelm those receptors. So just that tiny little bit is enough. It has to be kept in the fridge because it's a protein. So if it gets hot, it's going to degrade. It doesn't last very long. The expiration on this stuff usually is about 60 days. Uh, so you have to get it from a really good compounding pharmacy. Please don't go online and buy the stuff that you can get that's not designed for human use. When I was researching online, you can you can buy some of these things online, but I wouldn't do that. Um, they are prescriptions that need to be given by somebody who knows a lot about peptide science. Now, six months ago, that would not have been me, but now I can say that I would qualify. <laughs> I've been studying the heck out of this stuff. And then you need to know that the compounding pharmacy you're getting it from is incredibly well regulated. I use a fantastic compounding pharmacy in Dallas. There's probably several, but I think it's the best one. And then you've got to be a little bit patient because these changes might take some time. So many people say, you know, two, three months before they're really seeing a benefit. And then there is a group of pretty fast responders like me who noticed an improvement in sleep in less than a month. And I think having some type of measurement device, again, I keep going back to this, to know what's going on so that you can see your own results is critical because otherwise, you know, who would know what it's doing? So here's a little tip because I travel quite a bit. If you travel, you can take it through the TSA. They're totally fine with it. You want to get something like this, which is an insulin travel kit. So in an insulin travel kit, you just keep it in your freezer. It's got room for the needles and the little vial. And then it's got little cold packs. So you take this with you and then wherever you're going, stick it in the fridge as soon as you can. Now, if you're just going away for the weekend, that's okay because the suggestion is to use it five days on, two days off. Why is that? Well, there's this theoretical concern that the receptors might get tired or resistant if you use it every single day. Nobody's really proven that. So you could take it every day if you want to. Actually, the CJC 1295 lasts for about a week. So not taking it for two days doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, but the ipamorelin only lasts for a few hours. So Ipamorelin, you know, maybe it makes some sense to take a couple of days off of that one. But if you're using CJC 1295, that's just going to be in your system for longer than a week anyway. So five days on, two days off. <laughs> the main reason I recommend that, honestly, is because you'll save some money. It'll last longer. And it seems to work just as well as using it every single day. You might hear some other people say, use it for six months. You know, five days on, two days off for six months. And then take a month off. There's a whole bunch of different recommendations in that arena, but none of them are proven by science. They're really just whatever the provider's favorite recipe is. Uh, so I think you can take them every day or you can take a break. And because this CJC 1295 lasts so long taking a break, you won't notice any difference anyway. So maybe save yourself some money and do it that way. So I just think it's fascinating. It, if it's true, which I believe we can say with certainty that one of the things, and there's a whole bunch of them, but one of the things that's responsible for the changes that we all call aging is declining growth hormone. Now we all know declining testosterone and declining estrogen, those are incredibly important ones too, declining thyroid. 
but declining growth hormone is certainly one of them as well. So yes, we're going to get old and we're going to die and that's fine. But if we could slow down those changes that we all associate with aging and not just take for granted that our cells are going to start falling apart and we could slow that down, well, wouldn't that be great? So the baseline, of course, is always, in my opinion, hormone replacement with ovarian hormones if we're female, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. This is not going to work if you haven't done that first. So you've got to get those straight first. You've got to get your thyroid straight. Those are critical. And then this is another thing that you might want to investigate so long as you do it safely. And again, I'm not saying that it cures any diseases. I'm not promising that it's going to have any particular results. I'm just telling you about the science that's out there, which is very positive. Really no side effects, uh, knock on wood, <laughs> have been noted that are serious. And this is with hundreds of thousands of people having taken it since 1998. So some redness at the injection site. Some people get some flushing. I've heard diarrhea reported, although I've never seen it amongst the, pa the patients that I know. So suffice to say the side effects are minimal and none of them are serious. And the benefit could be very great. So I think it's one of those things that's worth continuing to keep a very close eye on. And having used it myself, I can tell you that it definitely does have some of those benefits. So when I'm 99 years old, I'll be able to tell you with, for sure. But hey, we don't have that long to wait. So Ipamorelin, CJC1295, it's a very interesting combination of peptides. There are lots of them out there. I've got another couple of favorites that I'm experimenting with in my own body that I am seeing have some great effects as well. And I'll talk to you about those another day because this is enough science for one sitting. But again, really, really important. If you do decide to do an experiment in this arena, get it from someone who knows what they're talking about. Don't order it from the internet. It has to be prescribed from a very, very reputable compounding pharmacy. And let's just see and observe how human studies progress as there's so many of them going on as we speak. And one thing to note, if you are a competitive athlete who's going to be tested, this stuff now is on the WADA, the World Athletic Doping Association list of things you can't take because it improves performance. Well... If it improves performance, <laughs> and I'm not in the Olympics, yeah, you know, that's something to be said for that, right? So, um, yes, do not take this if you're a competitive athlete and you're going to get tested because it is considered to be an illegal doping substance because it improves performance. <laughs> Now, those of us who are 55 and not in the Olympics, we don't have to worry about that. But yeah, maybe I want something that improves performance. That sounds like a pretty good idea to me. Anyway, uh, we'll keep talking more about peptides um, as I'm learning more and more about it. I'll update you on how my own peptide experiment is going with the Ipamorelin CJC1295. And if you like this episode, don't forget to subscribe, share it with your friends, and I'll be back next week.